All right, guys, so it is actually several weeks later. Sam and Katie's electrical cabinet is all done. In fact, their whole bus is all done, and we have now hit the road. Their system is working so, so well, and I'm finally ready to explain all of it to you and give you the final verdict about all the decisions that we made. Spoiler alert, I'm really happy about all of them, but let's go through them real quick. Oh, right. Oh, they're over here. Okay, we're over here. I guess everything is done in here. Try not to look too much. It's gonna spoil future videos. But let's start out with the fact that Sam and Katie's AC is running right now, set to 78 degrees. It is about 80 something outside in uh, Naples, Florida in January. Happy New Year, by the way. January 2022. Their battery is at 100%. Absolutely remarkable. A little extra detail. We actually added, Sam actually added, two more solar panels to the bus. We were thinking about having a deck with a bit of storage, maybe a hangout spot, but we decided the solar was worth it. So we now have eight panels on top of this bus, which brings us to 3,200 watts on a 32 foot bus. That's amazing. There's the extra two. Boom, boom. Really happy that Sam made the decision. Actually, I think it's really smart to just totally max out the solar you can put on your roof get that solar up there all right back inside so if you're into this stuff and you need to learn about these kinds of things for your build you're gonna get some value out of this 3200 watts of solar panels on the roof they are two series four parallel and all those go into the solar deck solar combiner box that you saw us install from there they are fused up there but they go to a breaker box let me show that to you so that is a breaker right there that allows us to turn off the power from the solar panels prevent it from coming in here so in addition to that we do have a lot of our dc distribution up here we didn't think we could fit all of the DC distribution in the lower cabinet. We didn't necessarily want to bring all the cables from up top down low when we could just bring one cable from down low up top. So we've got two DC fuse blocks, one here, one here, and this is a 24 to 12 volt step down converter. So right here, Sam made this very cool gauge box. This controls the lights in case you lose the remote. This one controls the dinette light. And this one right here turns on or off the tank monitors. Now right here is a Victron BMB battery monitor. That's a nice to have in your system. This will allow you to see remotely what the capacity is on your battery. You can also read it remotely from your phone. It's got a Bluetooth connection inside of it. So moving down here is everything that you saw us install. Now I left off this video when we had not figured out something that I did wrong with the AC panel and distribution. Overload. Overload. The only thing that I messed up was that I wired this switch right here for the water heater a little bit wrong. So we fixed that, now we are all good. Now we also only had every other circuit working in this AC panel. And that's because I forgot that when I built this in my bus, with this particular panel, you've got to jump power from the two hot lines. Not a big deal. So a cable runs from that solar breaker down through the wall right there into this electrical cabinet and then it runs into the solar charge controller. So that's the cable right there and it wraps around here and sends power to the solar charge controller. The solar charge controller is a 150 volt 100 amp charger with Bluetooth and that basically takes the current from your solar panels and organizes it in a manner that is best suited to your battery system. From there we've got two cables running off which go to our Lynx distributor. This Lynx distributor is really like a very hardcore bus bar. It's attaching our charge controller our inverters, our batteries, our shunt, and allowing us to manage them. So that's where the power goes next. From the Lynx distributor, power comes off and goes down into our battery bank, but first it goes through a shunt. That's a smart shunt. It's communicating with the battery monitor up in the upper cabinet, and it comes with a battery monitor. I don't think I have anything else to say about that. So you can see right here, we've got the negative lead running to the shunt and then connecting to the Lynx distributor. And we've got the positive lead going to a bus bar and to a transfer switch. The main purpose of that switch is to allow you to turn off power from your batteries. You want to be able to isolate the batteries and you need a big switch to do it. So that's basically how the links and the batteries communicate. From there, the Lynx distributor sends power that it gets from the batteries to the inverter. The inverter is a 24 volt 3000 multi plus. It can basically run 2400 watts consistently. It can surge higher. It is actually all we need for this build. You can basically run the air conditioning and the induction cooktop at the same time. You can run the water heater and the induction cooktop or the water heater and the air conditioning at the same time. However, However, you cannot really run the water heater, the AC, and the induction cooktop at the same time. You need to pick one of the three, but I think that's a totally fair sacrifice to save some money on your inverter and not have to go for the 5000 VA Multi Plus, which is a much bigger, much more expensive inverter, and it's basically overkill. So from the inverter, the 24 volt DC power from the batteries is turned into 120 volts AC power and sent to the AC distribution. That AC distribution box right there is basically an apartment box. It's like a sub panel. It's perfect for this application and it's working out really well for us. It has eight circuits, which means that you can put 16 
16 branches on it. When I build a bus, this one in Gilligan Phantom, I tend to put between 12 and 16 AC circuits in a bus. So that's gravy. Also from the batteries, 24 volts of power goes to the Lynx distributor and then to our DC fuse blocks. We do have two right here. They're not maxed out. Two is probably overkill. We only really need one, whatever, we got two. This one right here is 24 volts. It is running the fridge, maybe a fan or two. It's a little bit more efficient to run 24 volt DC appliances, but there's not many 24 volt DC appliances that exist. So you might not need that at all. You really don't need it. You can run everything off of 12 volt, but since we can do it, we did it. From there, we've got a 24 to 12 volt converter and then a 12 volt DC fuse block. This basically runs anything that was in the lower portion of the bus. You know, charging outlets, the DC pump, that kind of stuff. It's all down here. Everything upper, like the lights and the fans are all up top. This right here is a smart dongle. It is an addition to the inverter. It basically gives the inverter Bluetooth and allows you to monitor things that are happening with the inverter on your phone. So on our phone, we are able to look at what the inverter is doing, what the charge controller is doing, and what the battery bank is doing. We get to see the whole complete picture of our setup happening in real time. So finally, you've heard this whole time, some noise is running. There is a fan in the inverter that's pretty much always running. And we also have a fan right there that is sucking air through this cabinet into this cabinet and then out where it's basically either dissipating through the window or just coming up. Everything in here makes a bunch of heat. So you want to be able to release it somehow. It's nice and cool in here actually, which is really great. And that's thanks to those two fans that are running constantly. Now, finally, I wanna reiterate to you that you can air condition your bus with solar power. You just need max out solar panels and six to 10 100 amp lithium batteries. While none of that is cheap, you are essentially putting the whole electro grid in your bus. I would encourage you if you have the finances to go this route because it means that you are not tied to propane, you are not tied to campgrounds, you do not need a generator. You don't need any of that. You will need a shore power hookup on occasion, like if it's extremely cold and you, to, and you need to run a lot of heat and space heaters, or if it's extremely hot because your air conditioner will not be able to keep up forever, unless maybe you have this set up. So everything you saw me install to the best of my abilities, I have linked below. These are affiliate links. If you buy anything from them, you will be paying me a commission, which helps support this channel. And I really appreciate it. However, don't just settle for those Amazon links. Make sure you're getting the best pricing. Amazon basically has the best, but if you want to bulk some of these up, there are probably some distributors that will sell you several of these for a discount. So just be sure to get the best price on your products. I want to give a huge shout out to Lion Energy Lithium Batteries. They've been a great supporter of our channel and they're giving you an exclusive discount to their products in the links below or at tinyurl.com slash lion dash Gilligan. You will get these batteries at the best price as well as every other product on their website. Schoolbustinyhouse.com is our website if you want some more advice about building your schoolie. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.